Hi everyone. So a couple of weeks ago, I was giving a talk at GDevCon. Now GDevCon is an independent LabVIEW conference led by members of the community. Now at GDevCon, I was giving a talk about extending the LabVIEW IDE and trying to inspire people to create their own right click menu items, toolbar items, quick drop shortcuts, etc. to really improve their workflow when developing LabVIEW code. And so I wanted to do a quick YouTube series all about how you can extend your own LabVIEW IDE. Starting off with how to create your own custom right click menu. And I thought I would take you through a custom right click menu which I created recently. So if we head over to LabVIEW, I created a right click menu item that would allow me to right click any controller indicator and add to class data. So if a VI is part of a class, you can add any controller indicator to that class private data. So if we open up that class private data, see that it's empty at the moment. If I right click this boolean, I can add to class data and a boolean gets added to that class data. I could select two items, add to class data, I'd select another two items, add to class data. I could even go onto the block diagram and add to the class data from the block diagram as well. And so this is a way of really easily speeding up development, especially when using object-oriented programming. By the way, all of the code to this will be available on my GitHub page. So let's get right stuck into how this all works and how it all fits together. To create the files we need for this custom right click menu, we need to generate them from a template. So I'm going to head over to National Instruments, your chosen version of LabVIEW, but I would choose 2015 so it is forward compatible with any future versions you have, resources, plugin, and then pop up menus, and you want to open up create shortcut menu plugin from template. So if we double click this VI, we can choose a name for our plugin. So let's call this plugin add data to class. And I want this plugin to work at edit time. So when I'm developing code, I can right click a front panel control or a block diagram terminal and add that item to the class. And so I can just click run. By clicking run, three files have been generated, a control file and two VIs. And actually, these three items have been put as part of a LabVIEW library. That LabVIEW library has been saved in this folder location in your LabVIEW data. And it's been saved in LabVIEW data, so multiple versions of LabVIEW could use this plugin, not just 2015. Let's have a look at these files one by one. The control file decides what this right-click menu is going to support. And so by default, we're given a cluster and that cluster has an array of ref nums. And these ref nums are going to be pointing towards LabVIEW G object. So you can see G object selected there. However, I want this plugin to only work on controls and indicators. So the menu item doesn't appear on unsupported items. So for conformity, let's just change this title to controls. Then right click a ref num and select controls from the right click menu. So go to generic, LabVIEW G object, control, and control. Great, so now this right click menu item will only work when you right click and control, whether that's on the block diagram or on the front panel. It'll work for controls and indicators. At this stage, we should already see this plugin working in LabVIEW. So let's control Q and restart LabVIEW. So I've restarted LabVIEW and opened up a VI. Let's just test to see if this right click menu appears. So let's drop down a control and an indicator. And we can see the terminals on the block diagram. Let's right click the control. We've got the add data to class. Right click the indicator, add data to class. And we can check on the block diagram as well. Perfect, so we know we've set up our right click menu correctly. Let's go a step further, let's just plop down another function and make sure the right click menu doesn't appear 
on an unsupported item like a for loop. Now let's have a look at the middle item, the add data to class VI. So when we open up this VI, again, this is just a template. I haven't done anything to this code. You'll see we have lots of free labels explaining what everything does. However, I'm just going to delete those to make some, some more space because I need to determine whether the VI I'm in is part of a class. If it's part of a class, I want to show the menu item. If it isn't part of a class, then I don't. So to help me do that, I'm going to look at the user VI ref. Then I'm going to use a properties node to find out what the library reference is. So I'll go down to library. Because a class is just a type of library, I now need to downclass to the LabVIEW class, class data type. Okay, I jumped forward in time a little bit, and this is what I came up with. So it's just a decision-making piece of logic to say whether the user reference is part of a library and whether or not that library is actually a class. Because remember, a class is just a type of library. If the owning library isn't a class, they will get an error out here, which will pass out a null display name. So no item menu will appear. However, if there is a class there, then we don't get an error and the menu item to display I've put as add to class data dot 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 and there are a couple of advanced features here which I could go into like deciding where in your right click menu your item will display, whether your item is enabled or disabled and whether there's a check mark. If you'd like a more advanced tutorial about having nested items and all of that jazz uh, please let me know in the comments below and I'll put together a demonstration for you. Great, so in this piece of code, we're just deciding if it's part of a library, display add class to data. If it's not part of a library, just pass through an empty string and it won't be added. Let's go and have a look at what happens when this right click menu item is actually clicked on. Lastly, we have the execute VI or the execute add data to class VI. So again, let's just open this up and this is the template that you're given. You can see that we now have an array of all the affected items, so all of the controls, and so we could do things to those controls. We also have the user reference like we saw in the previous VI. As a quick demonstration of what we could do in this VI, let's just drop down a for loop and have a look at these references and drop down a property node so we can see the properties of what we're selecting. So we'll select the class name and also the label name. Then using a one button dialog box, we'll just put that back. This is just a test to see what we've done so far is working. So let's close this and restart LabVIEW. So if we add a control to the front panel, let's just put down an error cluster, right click that error cluster and add data to class. Great, so we, that dialog box has appeared. The class is a cluster and the label was error in, no error. And let's just test to see if this works with multiple items as well. So we've got three error clusters. We'll select all of them, right click, add data to class. And yeah, we had three dialog boxes appeared. So that worked fine. Let's go back to that VI. So now we know all of the elements of our right click menu works. I am now going to write some code that will script the creation of a new control into the class private data. Now because this video isn't about scripting per se, I'll skip ahead to that and then show you the code once I've created it. So this is the code that I came up with. Then we have a quick run through. We start off by looking at whether or not the library is a class. And if it isn't a class, then we get an error, else we go into this um, case. We then look at the class private data, and that gives us a reference to that control. Inside that control, I'm now looking for a cluster that's called cluster of class private data. And I'm using the function tref find object by label dot vi. And from there, I'm getting the reference, the reference out of the cluster from your private data typecasting it down to be a cluster 
and then I'm moving the control from the VI that you right clicked on over to your class private data. They'll give you a quick demonstration of why this move scripting method works. So if I open up two blank VIs and put in a function on one of them, I can move an item on one VI, but if I try and move across, I actually end up copying that VI. Now this is a really nice technique when it comes to scripting things like this, because when I use the move function, it's actually going to duplicate um, that control. So I'm going to move the control I right clicked on over to the class private data, specifically inside this cluster in the class private data. Then I have another scripting method called auto size and I'm making sure auto size is set to number three. And so if you're not aware with auto sizing, zero is no auto sizing, one is fit to size, two is fit uh, horizontally, three is fit vertically. And then I clean up the reference. Then at the end we have a failed transaction. In the error case, I have made it true else it's going to be false unless this cluster can't be found. Right, so that's all of the code and it's working. We can open up a quick test case. So if you go back to this test case, we should now be able to select all of these controls and indicators, right click, add to class data, and boom, all of those items have been added to class data. We can click save. Job's a good one. There was just Two more things I want to make you aware of. The first is we should always be separating our source code to the VI. What I mean by that is if we go into VI properties by pressing Control I, make sure this is selected, separate compiled code from source code. By separating the compiled code to the source code, it means LabVIEW won't try and recompile the same VI every time it's run, which means your right click menu will appear to be faster. The second item I want to make you aware of is the LabVIEW community page for this. So the LabVIEW shortcut menu plugins page. On this plugins page, you'll find some more documentation. You'll find lots of plugin menus that other people have created. In fact, there's some that I've created as well. So here we have um, add value change event. If we click on there, you can see that I have a video here of another plugin that I created and you will see download links as well. Excellent, so I really hope this video has been helpful for you. Please leave your comments, thoughts and suggestions in the comments below and remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Excellent, see you again soon.